Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about primitive types and reference types in Java. Here is our outline. We will talk about primitive types, reference types, and finally we will see the difference between primitive types and reference types. So let's get started. What are primitive types? They are the types that hold simple values. So for example, byte, short, int, long, float, double, and char are primitive types because they contain simple values. So what's so special about primitive types? Have a look over here. I'm defining a variable called i, it is an integer, and it is equal to 15. And also I have a character called c, which is equal to the character a. So if we want to imagine how these variables are stored in the memory, it will be something like this. We have a box that is called i, and inside it we have the value 15. And also we have another box which is called c, and inside it we have the character a. And as we said before, each box has an address. So for example, the address for the variable i is 300, and the address for variable c is 604. And of course, I'm choosing the addresses randomly, alright? So what's important over here is that the variable contains the value. Now let's talk about reference types. They are types that hold complex values, which are objects, okay? So you already know the string type, and you know that string is a class. So string is a reference type, right? So now have a look over here. I have a string called s and it is equal to this string over here. So let's see how this string is stored inside the memory. It will be something like this. First of all, we have a box that contains the string hello. And this box has an address. For example, it is 1004, right? And we have another box which is called s and this is our variable, right? So first of all, this box also have an address. For example, 800. What's interesting is the value of this box. Over here, we have 1004 which is the address of hello, right? So when we are dealing with reference types, the variable contains the address of the value. As you see over here, the variable s contains the address of the value hello, right? So this is why they are called reference types. The variable references the value. You can imagine it like this. We have the variable s, and this variable points to the value hello. This arrow is like a pointer or a reference, all right? So this is one difference between primitive types and reference types. Now let's see some more differences between primitive types and reference types. Consider this code over here. I'm defining two integers, i1 and i2. i1 is equal to 5 and i2 is equal to i1, alright? And over here I'm defining two strings. s1 is equal to hello and s2 is equal to s1. So now we're going to see together what's happening inside our memory. We will start with int i1 is equal to 5. So we are going to create a new variable that is called i1 and we will assign 5 to it. So we can imagine it like this. We have a box which is called i1 and inside it we have the value 5. And of course this box has an address and this is random, okay? And this is because i1 is a primitive type. So the variable contains the value. Now let's talk about int i2 equals i1. So we are assigning the value of i1 to i2, right? So this is an expression. We will calculate the expression and then we will assign the value to i2. So we will create a new variable which is called i2. And then we will assign the value of i1 to it. So we can imagine it like this. Now we have a new variable called i2 and inside it we have 5. Because this expression over here is equal to 5, right? It is equal to i1. And also i2 has an address which is 200. And I will say it again, I am putting the addresses randomly. So what's important over here is that i1 and i2 are different. They are distinct variables and they contain distinct values. This 5 over here is different than this 5 over here. This 5 is the value of i1 and this 5 is the value of i2. The values of i1 and i2 are not related, alright? Now let's see what happens when this statement is executed. We are creating a variable of type string, it is called s1. And we are assigning it to hello. So we are going to create a new variable s1 and we will assign the address of hello to it, right? So it will be something like this. First of all, we will store the string hello in a box. And this box has an address. And we will create another box which is our variable s1. And the value of this variable is the address of hello, which is 1008, right? So s1 points to or references hello, right? And of course, s1 is a variable. So it also has an address, which is 300, for example. And this is because s1 is a reference type. It is an object, and specifically it is a string, right? So now let's consider string s2 equals s1. 
So we are going to create a new variable which is called S2 and you will assign the value of S1 to it, right? So over here, this is an expression. We will assign the value that is generated by this expression to S2, right? So it will be something like this. We will create a variable called S2 and this variable has an address, which is 500 for example. And the value of S1, which is 1008, will be stored inside S2. So we will have 1008 inside S2. So now as you can see, the address of hello is inside S1 and also inside S2. So S1 and S2 are different, but they reference the same value. S1 is a variable and S2 is a different variable. But S1 and S2 reference the same value, which is hello over here. So we can summarize it like this. When we are dealing with primitive types, each variable is a box. And inside this box, we have the value. So I1 is equal to 5 and I2 is equal to 5. This variable and the value is different than this variable and the value. This 5 over here is different than this 5 over here. But when we are dealing with reference types, S1 and S2 will reference the same value. And of course, later we will see some more details about this. But now I want you to get the idea. So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.